Students, from today onwards, we will start the advanced structural design subject unit one. Okay, so unit one is related to design of RCC retaining wall. Okay, so today we will discuss about introduction about retaining wall. What are the classification of retaining walls? So this is your unit one. Design and detailing of cantilever type of retaining walls. Stability check. Principles and the design of counterfoil retaining walls. This is your unit one. So the unit uh, is very simple. Only two types of retaining wall design we must uh, know. But the problems all are lengthy. So definitely in the examination, either they will ask procedure, design procedure and a detailing procedure and or uh, they will ask problems with the detailing, detailing of the reinforcement diagrams. Okay. So first, what is in the retaining walls? So the name itself having answer. So retain. So the wall is retain something. So it is called retaining wall. So mostly it retains earth or soil. Okay, behind them. Okay. So the retaining walls are structures constructed for the purpose of retaining earth. Okay, constructed for the purpose of retaining earth or other materials like coal, ore, water, etc. Okay, it may also be defined as a ball provided to maintain ground at two different levels. This word is very, very important. Students. Okay, so suppose we are constructing a road or railway line. Okay. Across to a elevated portion means definitely we have to dig some uh, uh, soils or uh, levels. Uh, earth. Okay, so we have to maintain two different levels. Okay, for that purpose, uh, near the railway line or a uh, road side, we have to construct a yeah, retaining walls. Okay, so the provisions of retaining walls become necessary in the construction of hill roads. See, mostly the retaining walls are constructed in hill roads. Okay. So, why? Because while constructing in uh, roads in hill road, definitely there are two different levels out there. Okay. And embankments. Okay. Embankments, bridge abutment, bridge abutment, basement in buildings. Suppose a building is constructed in underground. Okay. That means below the uh, earth surface ground level means definitely we have to construct a retaining wall on the overall outside of the building so that it will retain the earth or soil. Okay. Next, water reservoir in preventing measures against soil erosion. Okay, so in hilly areas, mostly soil erosion is surface. So in that portion, we have to construct a retaining wall and in landscaping etc the material retained by the wall is generally known as backfill okay so mostly 99 percentage we are using retaining wall to retain earth in some place we have to retain coal water something etc okay so the retained material is called backfill okay so the backfill may be horizontal Okay, sometimes the backfill may be horizontal level or it may be an inclined level at some degree. The backfill may be horizontal that is leveled with the top of the wall or it may be inclined at certain angle to the top. The inclined fill is known as surcharge. Okay, the inclined fill. Suppose this is the retaining wall. Okay. Suppose this is the retaining wall. This is the backfill. Okay. So this is called surcharge. This angle is called surcharge angle. So this is road side. This is road. This is road side. And these are all the soils. Okay. Filled with soils. Okay. 
so sometimes it is pure horizontal the angle is zero sometimes it is uh, somewhat some inclination is happens okay that is called a surcharge okay besides loads due to retained material the retaining wall may also be subject to surcharge load what do you mean by surcharge load in that uh, inclined portion is there na that means above the retaining wall in that also some uh, load okay in that also some road is there means some vehicle is moving or train is moving means that load is called surcharge load that means any other external load due to automobile automobile is nothing but the uh, any vehicles or rail road okay the uh, train is passing on the above portion okay so under this uh, the surcharge load also occurs okay so acting directly on the wall as well as on the back field the retaining wall should be stable enough to resist all types of forces acting on it okay so we have to design the retaining wall for external lateral pressure due to the soil as well as we have to design to uh, withstand the external surcharge load also okay so two things you have to remember mainly the load will occurs a lateral load due to the soil pressure okay lateral load due to the soil pressure second load is a surcharge load that means any external load due to automobile or bus lorry or uh, any uh, rail road is there means that load also we have to uh, the retaining wall should be withstand okay these two things you have to remember so this is a simple example for retaining wall okay you can see this retaining wall is constructed uh, using stones this retaining wall is constructed uh, using stones only okay that means rubble masonry you can see one is uh, upper portion of soil and the another level is lower portion of the soil okay so this is constructed in the residential area okay so this stone portion is called a retaining wall because it's retain the uh, behind soil okay so it is called the retaining wall you can see the two levels this is the level 1 this is level 1 and this is level 2 okay so uh, we have to maintain two levels means definitely we have to construct the retaining walls now here you can see students so this is the highway passage uh, this is the retaining wall so this portion is called retaining wall and also you can see uh, the surcharge surcharge is not a pure horizontal it was somewhat some inclination is there okay surcharge is not this angle is called uh, theta this is called a surcharge angle okay so this picture clearly from this picture you can uh, understand clearly the what is by surcharge and what is by surcharge angle this one this is i can see the height of the retaining wall okay and uh, this also one of the simple retaining wall constructed in stones okay see the levels of the uh, soils okay one is upper level and another one is lower level you can see here this is the rcc retaining wall cantilever type retaining wall so why it is called cantilever type retaining wall means you can see here in this picture the base portion is a uh, wider portion so it is like a fixed fixed portion okay and uh, the height height of the retaining wall is also called stem okay stem okay so the portion is like a uh, the other end is a free okay so it is called a free portion so this is fixed another one is this is three okay so this is fixed and this is free portion so it is the cantilever retaining wall okay cantilever type of retaining wall and this is the reinforcement 
details of the cantilever type of retaining wall that we will see in the next portion. So here, uh, web holes is there. They pro are providing web holes. So the web holes, the main purpose of web, web holes means during during a rainy season, uh, the water is stagnated on the upper level. So uh, using this web holes, the water will drain easily to the lower level. Okay. And the compacted backfill, the upper side is the compacted backfill and this is the gravel backfill. Okay. On the upper side. Okay. So these are all the types of retaining wall. So types of retaining wall. So in this type of retaining wall, there are five major types. Five major types. One is gravity retaining wall. Second one is uh, semi gravity retaining wall. Third one. So the third type is cantilever retaining wall. Third type is cantilever retaining wall. Fourth type is counterfort retaining wall. And fifth one is butters wall. Okay, fifth one is butters wall. Okay. So what is in the gravity retaining wall? You can see in this picture. So student, this is very very important term. Big question. Okay. So maybe they will ask me in. Uh, Theory questions also. So gravity retaining walls means the size of the retaining walls is very much huge. Okay. So the rate it will retain due to its self height only, it will retain the backfill. Okay. Like uh, gravity dams. Okay. So it is constructed using stones only, not concrete or only stones. Due to the self height of the stones, it will retain the backfill. Okay. Uh, it is uh, mainly this type of gravity retaining wall constructed for smaller height backfill. Okay, the height of the backfill is smaller. Height. Next, coming to semi gravity wall. Semi gravity wall is nothing but it is constructed both uh, concrete as well as stone. Okay, you can see the lines. Lines is there, na? So this lines is the steel. Okay, RCC steel. Okay. So bottom and the side portion, this back wheel portion, we laid the steel portion. Okay. So this also uh, constructed for moderate height uh, back wheels. So coming to cantilever retaining wall. So this cantilever and comfort retaining wall is very much important. So this cantilever retaining wall constructed for up to 6 meter height. Up to 6 meter height. So it consists of uh, components of toe, heel, and stem. So, like our foot. Okay. So, in our foot, uh, uh, same model. Okay. Cantilever wall is then uh, same model as per our foot. So, the back portion of our foot is called toe, and front portion is called heel. Okay. And uh, our bone is there now, uh, height uh, in our leg. That is called stem. Okay, you can easily understand. So, toe is the back side and heel is the front side and stem is the height. So, this cantilever type of retaining wall constructed for 6 meter height. Okay. So, the third type of cantilever retaining wall used to construct up to 6 meter height only. So, coming to counterfort retaining wall, counterfort retaining wall is the Another type of cantilever retaining wall only. The only difference is we need to provide some counterfort support. Okay, at the backfill side only. Okay, so uh, we have to fill the soil in that above the counterfort itself. Okay, so 
why we need providing this counterfort means this type of counterfort retaining wall is constructed more than 6 meter high okay so please be remember the only difference is for cantilever and counterfort is cantilever retaining wall is constructed below 6 meter 6 meter or below 6 meter but counterfort retaining wall is constructed for above 6 meter okay so this is the counterfort you can see the dotted line is there na that is called a counterfort okay so back fill is filled in that the counterfort portion one coming to butter wall you can see the difference between butter wall and the counterfort retaining wall you can see in butter wall back fill is filled the other side of the counterfort okay okay that is the major difference okay back fill is filled other side of the counterfort but you can see here same counterfort also it is here but here the name is butter wall butter wall is also here one of the supporting wall only okay so here it is exposed not filled with the back fill in this butter wall the counterfort is not filled with the soil or any earth or any back fill it is exposed to okay exposed to the environment okay that is the uh, difference between counterfort and butter wall and this type of butter wall butter walls also constructed above 6 meter height okay so students this is the major five types of retaining walls okay i think all of you understand so in our syllabus the cantilever retaining wall under counter fort retaining wall this two major categories only available next coming to let us see one by one in depth coming to gravity walls this walls are constructed in brick masonry stone masonry or plain cement concrete so as i already told this gravity type of retaining wall is constructed a uh, very less height for less height back fill one okay so therefore this walls are constructed in brick masonry or stone masonry or plain cement concrete not uh, reinforced cement concrete plain cement concrete okay the wall is so proportioned that the dead weight of the wall provides required stability against the thrust exerted by the back fill okay so here the dead weight of the wall is more dead weight of the wall is more okay uh, and also it uh, gives provides uh, required stability against the thrust that means thrust is nothing but the force exerted by the back fill that means the lateral pressure of the back fill soil pressure okay including surcharge including surcharge the size of the wall is so kept that there is no tensile stresses is developed at any section of the wall under any condition of loading so always okay any type of retaining wall there is a, we should not provide any tensile stresses why means we know that uh, all the brittle materials so if you take stone concrete uh, brick uh, everything all are the uh, brittle materials only so all brittle materials are strong in compression but very much weak in tension okay so that we have to resist the tensile stresses okay in the walls okay so that under all we have to check in the stability conditions okay so students here you can see a uh, highway is there in that side a smaller height gravity retaining walls constructed okay this type of gravity retaining walls constructed using stones okay rubble stones only okay next coming to cantilever type retaining wall so these are all rcc balls okay cantilever type of retaining walls are rcc balls made in the form of an inverted t as shown in figure so it is nothing but inverted t shape okay it is also called a t type retaining wall inverted t type retaining wall okay 
so when uh, flange portion one portion is called toe another portion is called web and the vertical portion is the stem okay so this type of wall proves to be economical for moderate heights say 6 meter okay so this type of wall proves to be economical very much economical for up to 6 meter only the wall consists of three components so as I, we already know that three components what are the components stem toe and shield okay stem toe and shield each of these components are designed as a cantilever okay because one end is fixed other one end is free only okay so the stability of the wall is partially provided by the weight of the earth on the hill okay the stability of the wall is partially provided by the weight of the earth on the hill sometimes the cantilever wall is constructed in the form of l shape also okay in this case wall is wall has only two components stem and shield each being designed as cantilever many a times to increase the resistance of the wall to sliding it becomes necessary to provide a vertical projection known as t see there are three important types of stability checks is there one is overturning another one is sliding and the third one is bearing okay the retaining wall should uh, safe in all this three condition otherwise the retaining wall will fail any one or two of this stability condition so for the purpose of sliding to resist sliding sliding is nothing but it move from initial place to another place okay so automatically due to the earth fill okay due to the earth fill due to the lateral pressure automatically the retaining wall will slide okay from initial portion to second portion okay so that uh, projection uh, so for that uh, moving for sliding we uh, to resist that sliding we have to provide a yeah, shear key that is called a shear key below the base of the wall so this all we will discuss in the problem okay so in cantilever type of retaining wall we must know the three things one is three components stem toe heel and sometimes it is constructed using l type and for sliding to resist sliding we must provide a shear key okay uh here you can see students this is the cantilever type of retaining wall so this are all the soil fill so it having some angle okay theta okay so this are all the soil okay the brown color indicates the soil and this is the toe heel and stem so you can see in this picture it is clearly shown okay so this is called a stem stem is a vertical cantilever and toe toe also a small cantilever and heel okay so stem toe heel all are meeting in one point this point this is the fixed point so that it is called cantilever type retaining wall one end is fixed there are three components are there in this three components one end only fixed all other ends are free only okay so you can see here here earth fill is pure horizontal there is no surcharge okay so uh, there is this retaining wall maintains two levels one is upper level here this is uh, level 1 upper level and this is level 2 okay lower level okay so these are all the components of the cantilever type retaining wall okay so these are all the dimensions required for the uh, retaining wall you can see a uh, top of the stem minimum 200 mm required top of the stem minimum 200 mm required <coughs> and the bottom of the stem uh, it should be h by 12 to h by 10 h is the overall height of the overall height of the cantilever type retaining wall okay and b is equal to 0.4 to 0.7 h okay 0.4 to 0.7 h and the toe width is b by 3 so in this b is there na in that uh one third b by 3 okay so this is this are all the 
components and angle is uh, minimum better it is uh, 48 degree okay sorry not 48 around uh, less than 10 degree okay so this are all the components of the cantilever type retaining wall now students here you can see a yeah, cantilever type retaining wall so here you can see the stem okay so this is called stem and this is called heel so this is stem stem and this is heel and this is this portion is toe okay the toe portion is uh, very less length only okay very less uh, length but compared to toe heel width is more and stem is very much higher up to six meter we can provide okay so you can see here a yeah, pre-cast cantilever type retaining wall okay so it is uh, considered uh, made uh, in prefabrication factory after that they bring uh, in the site location after that they erected and placed in the corresponding places this is called a pre-cast type cantilever type retaining wall okay so in our first unit we have to study the design of the stem design of heel and design of toe this is our first unit for cantilever type and as well as comfort type retaining wall is coming to counter for retaining wall when the height of the retaining wall to be provided exceed 6 meter so below 6 meter means cantilever above 6 meter means contour okay so contour retaining wall proved to be economical in this type of wall the base slab as well as stem of the wall span horizontally as continuous slab between vertical brackets known as contour as shown in figure so we know that um, comfort is nothing but an external support. Okay. So while designing, uh, we have to assume like the support as a beam and that uh, stem is not, nothing but a slab. Okay. So we have to design as a continuous beam. Okay. So that and all we will see in the uh, problem. Okay. So the counterparts are provided behind the wall on the back side this portion is very much important some of the students while uh, drawing they kept uh, out uh, another side of the back field counterpoint they provide another side of the back field it is strong the counterpoint should be provided exactly on the back field side only that is very very important and are subjected to tensile forces subjected to tensile forces the spacing of the counterforce may vary from 2.5 meter to 4 meters. Okay, spacing of the counterforce that means that the additional support spacing center to center spacing is 2.5 meter to 4 meter of the height of the wall. The more height of the wall, the closer should be the spacing of the counterforce. Suppose uh, the counterforce height uh, height is uh, sorry, the stem height is around 10 meter means. Uh, the counterfort spacing will be less around 2.5 meter okay because uh, the uh, if you increase the height of the stem means the stability will uh, subjected to failure okay stability uh, enough stability not that so for that to increase the stability of the stem okay so we must provide the counterforce with the lesser spacing okay that means closer spacing that is the major thing this is the counterfort type retaining now students here you can see the typical diagram of the counterfort retaining so here you can see toe slab heel slab and uh, counterforts and stem okay so the soils are filled soils are filled in this uh earth side only okay Okay, so in this counterpart portion only, we have to fill the back fill. Now here you can see the top width of the stem should be 0.3 meter minimum. 
okay and the base lab base lab dimension is 0.5 to 0.7 h okay 0.5 to 0.7 h so the overall height of the retaining wall is c capital h so b is equal to 0.5 to 0.7 h and uh, the width of the contour is 0.3 meter minimum and the spacing of the contour is 0.3 to 0.5 h okay so based on the height of the retaining wall we can arrive the dimension of the other components okay students uh, here you can see the counterforts how they provided okay you can see these are all the counter forts okay rcc counter fort see the spacing and the back wall also we have to provide in the counter fort portion only okay students so this butter walls is identical to a counter fort retaining wall with the main difference that the vertical brackets are provided in front of the wall okay just now we seen uh, in butter wall there will be a projection is there in the face of the wall okay like counter fort okay so on face opposite to the face of retaining back fill okay as shown in figure the brackets in this case are known as butters okay that uh, actually they mention brackets and also it is called a contour only the contours here is called butters and by virtue of their location they are subjected to compressive forces always because this type of butters is subjected to compressive force why it subjected to compressive force means opposite side there will be a lateral pressure is there okay so it push the retaining wall it push the retaining wall so due to this pushing action the butters is subjected to compressive forces so we have to design uh, it, the butters as a compression element not a tension element okay so you can see students this is the best example picture for the butters wall so here uh, you can see a road is there okay here road is there and this is the retaining wall and uh, this is the butters this is the extra support extra compression support provided on the retaining wall to resist the lateral pressure okay so you can see here this wall is constructed using brick masonry not in concrete it is constructed using brick masonry okay in this picture and also spacing spacing also same like a counter fort wall only okay so we'll see the next picture uh, you can see here this is also another example for concrete butter wall okay this is not made up of uh, brick masonry it is made up of concrete okay so here this side uh, road is there okay so there will be a enough support required because another side some uh, buildings or some other uh, elements are there so we can't con uh, construct the, this butter wall on the other side okay so that they constructed on the opposite side so this all the this uh, this called a compressive element is called butters okay next coming to stability of retaining wall okay see mostly retaining walls all type of uh, retaining walls failed failed in this three cases actually four cases but in this picture uh, only three is there fourth one i will tell you okay so uh, gravity cantilever type pond fort butter wall all the retaining walls will fail in any one or two conditions okay so while designing care should be taken so we have to check the retaining wall in all the stability criteria okay so i will tell one by one the first one is overturning so what is meant by overturning overturning is nothing but tilting okay tilting of the retaining wall okay you can see the dark line you can see the first picture the dark line is the original position dark line is the original position and after earth fill uh, the retaining wall will tilt 
okay so this dotted line is the you can see the dotted line this is the final position and also it uh, overturning about its toe only so why it is called above its toe means you can see here the toe position will not change so according to the toe position uh, the tilting is occurs you can see the arrow mark okay so this is called this type of failure is called over turning over turning next coming to second case sliding see most of you know about uh, sliding gates okay sliding gate is nothing but it move on its own uh, path okay so uh, it move from same uh, one place to another place okay uh, you can see here sliding along the base so the dark line is the original position and dotted line is the uh, move after moving the after moved the retaining wall position okay so here you can see why this type of uh, failure is occurs means initially we designed some weight or uh, some load surcharge load on the retaining wall so if excessive load or excessive pressure is created on the retaining wall means this type of sliding along the base failure is occurs okay so this is the second case coming to third case okay third case is nothing but bearing capacity okay what is in by bearing capacity when soil is fail in shear okay so every soil having some shear capacity shear resisting capacity okay so when this shear resisting capacity fails this type of bearing capacity failure is occurs okay so in this also initially we assumed or uh, initially we taken some bearing capacity value in kilo newton per meter square okay so after that the bearing capacity loses so when it is reduced suppose due to heavy rain water will water level will increase water level is increased to its base base of the retaining wall means uh, the bearing capacity will reduce okay that means the uh, foundation of the retaining wall will fully submerged in water means the bearing capacity will reduce so we have to consider the water levels also in worst condition only we have to design the foundation so this is applicable not only for retaining wall in normal uh, building structures also in normal building structures also we have to consider the bearing capacity okay bearing capacity under worst condition the water level is uh, at the bottom of the foundation okay under this worst condition only we have to design okay so this bearing capacity failure bearing capacity failure occurs due to the in, uh, increase the level of water at the top of the uh, foundation okay so we have to consider uh, bearing capacity also this is very very important okay so three cases overturning sliding bearing capacity actually one more one more failure is there that is called tension at base avoid tension okay so we know that uh, concrete uh, brick uh, any uh, brittle materials are strong in compression but very much weak in tension so we have to avoid tension force we must avoid tension force okay so that that uh, tension should be within the base that means uh, eccentricity eccentricity of the force should be less than b by 6 where b is the base dimension of the retaining wall b is the base dimension of the retaining wall so the tension force should be within the b by 6 uh, less than or equal to eccentricity e eccentricity we mentioned in e it is less than or equal to b by 6 okay under this condition means the 
retaining wall is safe otherwise it is not safe okay so that should be uh, very much important so this type of uh, all the failures we will discuss in the problems okay numerical problem so next excessive settlement may occur if weak soil layers is located below the foundation within 1.5 times the foundation width actually the settlement also related to bearing capacity only if bearing capacity uh, very much less means uh, the settlement also is a question mark okay so this mainly overturning sliding bearing capacity and eccentricity and eccentricity so this four types of failure four types of failure uh, we have to check while designing the retaining walls okay so next coming to our syllabus so in our syllabus the first design is cantilever retaining wall the second design is counterfort retaining wall okay so now from today onwards from today classes we start cantilever type retaining wall okay so we know that uh, already know in cantilever retaining wall there are three important components the first one is stem okay stem is nothing but a vertical member vertical rcc member okay so the stem is free at the top and end top end and fixed at the base end okay so that it is called cantilever retaining wall so what is mean cantilever cantilever structure or cantilever beam or cantilever elements is nothing but in that one end is fixed other end is free okay so you can see in stem also the bottom end is fixed the top end is free okay the, we can't give uh, we didn't give any support at the top okay so the moment where uh, moment will be maximum in cantilever structure at the fixed end okay so at uh, at sub at top of the member the moment is zero okay at top is moment is zero at bottom that means at fixed end the moment is maximum okay so next the lateral pressure make the stem to bend away from the retained soil hence the stem is treated as a vertical cantilever and designed for the maximum bending moment okay so we have to design the stem as a vertical cantilever and design for the maximum bending moment okay at the base next coming to next tension is developed in the face near the retained soil so i already told the tension we should avoid so that the eccentricity is we have to check it is less than b by 6 or not next tensile steel calculator will be placed in the tensile zone as vertical bars so the here the main reinforcement is vertical one because the moment is developed and near the fixed end and it goes on reducing to the top of the retaining wall cantilever type retaining wall okay so we have to provide the main reinforcement in the vertical direction in the stem okay the horizontal steel as distribution steel okay so the horizontal steel distribution there is no uh, stirrups and all this is not a beam this is like a slab so only main reinforcement and distribution like one way slab okay remember one way slab in one way slab one direction that means shorter direction we are providing main reinforcement on the longer direction we are providing distribution reinforcement same like here also in stem the in vertical portion we are providing main reinforcement and in horizontal direction we are providing distribution reinforcement okay next coming to heel slab okay remember the heel slab 
the heel is also considered as a cantilever slab as we know the heel is subjected to surcharge load the weight of retained soil from the top and soil bearing pressure from the bottom okay the heel is also considered as a cantilever slab okay this also so heel toe stem all are uh, like a cantilever slab only okay as we know the heel is subjected to surcharge load okay so anything uh, so uh, the major load is acting in heel only because uh, earth, earth earth load also there and any uh, external load like lorry buses trains that load also the heel slab only bear okay so the weight of retained soil from the top and the soil bearing pressure from the bottom okay so since the structure is used to retain soil of larger depth okay so the structure is used to retain the soil of larger depth we can uh, accommodate larger depth also the effect of soil weight on the heel the effect of soil weight on the heel will be more when compared to bearing pressure compared to bearing pressure thus the heel bends downward so due to the excessive load of the soil and the surcharge load the heel bends downward okay hence tension is developed on the top surface and the tension is developed on the top surface therefore the tensile steel should be provided on the top okay suppose you assume the heel slab we know that a cantilever slab in a cantilever slab where we provide the main reinforcement always at the top because in cantilever member cantilever slab tension goes top compression goes bottom okay so same thing here in the heel slab tension goes top compression goes bottom so we have to provide the reinforce tension reinforcement at the top okay so therefore the tension steel should be provided on the top and in the direction perpendicular to the stem okay so distribution steel will be provided in the other direction distribution steel will be provided in the other direction okay so only one direction only at top one direction uh, uh, main reinforcement another direction distribution steel so everything i will show in the picture okay next is like next coming to toe slab okay so toe slab is a very minimum width okay very very less width so the effect of the weight of the soil above the toe slab will be less okay so so in stone slab the above the toe slab the soil the earth is uh, filled with less side only but below uh, it covered with the full of soil okay so this also a small cantilever structure small cantilever slab only okay so toe slab is also designed as a cantilever slab since the slab bends upward students remember uh, the main difference between heel slab and toe slab is heel slab bends downwards heel slab bends downwards but in toe slab bend upwards okay so i will show a clear picture on the next slide so from that slide you can uh, easily understand okay so this are all the two things uh, heel slab bends downwards toe slab bends upward so that the tension is developed on the bottom in heel slab tension develop at top in toe slab tension developed on the bottom surface hence the tension steel is provided at the bottom surface perpendicular to the stem okay so the tension reinforcement you have to provide on the bottom surface in case of toe slab in case of heel slab we must provide at the top okay so this is the basic difference between 
heel slap and the toe slap next coming to shear kick okay this is the optional one when the retaining wall fails in sliding please be remember when a retaining wall is fails in the stability criteria in sliding st sliding stability criteria we have to provide shear kick this is the optional one this is not a compulsory one the stem heel toe is the compulsory for a cantilever retaining wall shear kick is optional okay when it is provided means when the stability condition sliding is failure the retaining wall failure means uh, we have to provide shear kick okay it will be subjected to passive soil pressure it will be subjected to passive so there are two important types of soil pressure one is active soil pressure another one is passive soil pressure okay so uh, stem is subjected to active soil pressure So stem is uh, active soil pressure. Stem is uh, subjected to active soil pressure, and shear key is subjected to passive soil pressure. So this will bend the shear key away from the direction of the sliding. Okay, so it is a extra projection. and it resist the sliding sliding condition it resist the sliding condition okay so hence the tensile bar is provided on the left face hence the tensile bar is provided on the left face as per the picture of the shear key in the vertical direction okay shear key in the vertical direction so this is about shear key and also it is optional one only okay next coming to students uh, this is the reinforcement details of the cantilever type retaining wall so here i am i shown the two pictures okay you can see here the first picture you can see students how cantilever retaining wall bends okay in which portion soil pressure is acting coming to stem you can see how the soil pressure is acting and this is the deflected shape of the stem okay so the tension is occurs on the face of the soil pressure face coming to heel slab you can see here due to the excessive load surcharge load and uh, earth load uh, it will bend uh, at bottom okay it will bend at the bottom so tension occurs at the top okay so the arrow indicates the soil pressure coming to toe slab you can see the toe slab so this is the toe slab you can see in the toe slab the soil pressure is acting upward because in this space there is no soil okay in this space there is no soil soil is uh, filled at the bottom of the retaining wall only okay so uh this portion having soil and bottom portion having soil so in this space there is no soil so here only we are constructing road or uh, railway lines okay in hilly areas so that uh, this is the deflected shape the dotted line is the deflected shape you can see clearly how the cantilever retaining not def deflected due to the excessive soil pressure okay so coming to right side figure you can see the reinforcement with the shear key okay so the bottom portion is there na this is called shear key okay this portion is called shear key so the shear key is provided when uh, retaining wall fails in sliding okay so this is the stem so in this stem reinforcement is provided on the tension zone so where tension zone is occurs means near the soil face okay 
coming to heel slab you can see heel slab main reinforcement bar for heel slab in this heel slab tension is occurs at the top of the heel slab so that we have to provide the reinforcement in the top tension zone coming to toe slab main reinforcement bar for toe slab in this toe slab uh, uh, you can see the deflector shape the crack is occurs at the bottom only so that we have to provide the reinforcement at the bottom okay this is the toe slab reinforcement okay so that tension occurs on the bottom okay so here they are provided 10 mm of dia bars okay so uh, main reinforcement in stem toe slab heel slab distribution reinforcement they are provided 10 mm of dia bars okay so same like uh, figure same like figure also we have to draw after the design of cantilever type retaining wall okay so okay student i think uh, all of you understand the introduction class about cantilever type retaining wall so rankin's theory okay so the rankin's theory may be used for finding the earth pressures acting on a retaining wall okay so what are the assumptions of the rankin's theory so based on the assumptions only rankin's derived the formula okay so first assumption is soil is semi infinitive homogeneous dry and cohesionless okay so the best example for cohesionless soil is uh, sand and homogeneous means all in all the portion the property is same this is the first assumption second assumption the soil element is in the state of plastic equilibrium okay it is in the equilibrium condition it should not fail uh, uh, in uh, shear or some other failure should not occur okay third one the ground surface is plane which may be horizontal or inclined okay the ground surface in the sense means uh, at the backfill side okay either it is the backfill is horizontal or it may be some inclined okay as in in the photo next the back of the vertical is smooth okay so the back of the vertical is nothing but the vertical means what stem okay so at the, the stem it should be a friction frictionless frictionless means what it's very smooth surface okay next the wall yield above the base the satisfy the deformation condition for plastic equilibrium okay the wall yield above the base thus the satisfies the deformation condition for plastic equilibrium that means the whole weight okay including self weight it's uh, transferred to the base only okay so these are all the uh, basic assumptions of rankin's theory so what is the before going to the coefficient of earth pressure first we must know what is meant by coefficientless soil and cohesive soil okay so coming to coefficientless soil the interaction or bond between soil particles are absent okay you can see so the best example for coefficientless soil is uh, sand and cohesive soil is clay okay so uh, you can see the sand means the interaction between the bond or bond between the soil particles is uh, zero only okay but in case of uh, cohesive soil uh, the interaction is more okay so the interaction or bond between soil particles is perfect okay next shearing resistance is only the function of angle of friction shearing resistance that means uh, pi value angle of repo or angle of internal friction okay the shearing resistance is only the function of the angle of friction next is uh, com coming to cohesive soil the shearing resistance is only the function of the cohesion so here angle of friction there in cohesive soil it is cohesion only the shearing resistance uh, capacity next third one the bearing capacity of soil is high okay always uh, in case of cohesion less soil the bearing capacity is more okay uh, in cohesive soil the bearing capacity of soil is very very low 
okay for that only in case of the foundation constructed in place soil we must uh, uh, careful because uh, if, if water is coming to action so that will be a degradation in the bearing capacity okay so bearing capacity will reduce so we have to do special type of foundations in case of cohesive soils okay next part one permanent soil is more always if you uh, pour some water on the sand particle uh, what happened immediately it will vanish that means permeability is more okay so sand particles are highly permeable but in case of uh, cohesive soil permeability is very very less unnegligible okay the type uh, the type of soil is coarse gravel sand silt etc these are all the examples of cohesive soil coming to cohesive soil the type of soil is soft shell clay etc clay is the best example for the uh, cohesive soil so these are the five major difference between the cohesion cohesionless soil and cohesive soil next coming to pressure quotients so in last semester you studied in uh, foundation engineering same this topic so there are three important pressure quotients one is pressure quotient at rest active earth pressure quotient passive earth pressure quotient okay so uh, in case of retaining wall the ratio between the lateral and vertical principal active stress okay the ratio between the lateral lateral means what that mean the horizontal force lateral means horizontal okay horizontal and vertical principal affective stress when an earth retaining structure is at rest or is not allowed to move at all okay so some lateral force is acting some vertical force is acting even though that uh, uh, retaining wall should not move that means it is in the rest condition so under this the pressure position is k not okay next coming to active earth pressure position it is nothing but ka in some books uh, they mentioned ca okay ca or ka i mentioned ka okay so active earth pressure position is the ratio between lateral and vertical principal affective stresses when an earth retaining structure moves away from the retained soil moves away from the retained soil that means uh, in active earth pressure position the lateral and the vertical load due to this lateral and vertical load the wall is push okay and moves away from the retained soil okay under this condition it is uh, active earth pressure okay see most of the retaining wall design based on this active earth pressure position only okay this condition only will come next coming to passive earth pressure position okay passive is, means it is a quite opposite quite opposite of active that means uh, in case of active earth pressure the wall is move away from the retained soil in passive earth pressure the wall is moves towards towards the retained soil okay so this is the passive earth pressure position it mentioned as kp so this too actually uh, uh, earth pressure at rest is not important students only active earth pressure and the passive earth pressure position is very very important okay while designing a stem heel slab and all active earth pressure position is needed while designing shear key okay in the problem we have to design in uh, shear key means this passive earth pressure position is necessary okay so so that is the ratio between the lateral and vertical principal affective stress when an earth retaining structure is forced forced to move that means towards against the soil mass or uh, retained earth okay is called passive earth pressure position okay so uh, finally active means it moves away from the retained soil passive means it moves towards from the retained soil okay so actually this passive earth pressure position is imaginary one so practically uh, uh, it will not occur practically okay so only we have to uh, use this 
KP value. That means uh, passive water pressure coefficient in the design of shear pit. Okay. So coming to lateral earth pressure. So how to calculate the lateral earth pressure? So we know that in case of a retaining wall. So suppose this is the retaining wall. Okay. So it's subjected to retained earth on the back side. Okay. So what is the pressure distribution diagram? I think this is already you studied. Okay. So this is your pressure distribution diagram. Okay. So it's a triangle. So always. So not only retaining wall in dams also. In dams. In dams, uh, we retain the water. In retaining wall, we retain the earth. This is the basic difference. But the pressure distribution diagram is always seen. Okay. So now you can see this is the pressure distribution diagram in the retaining wall. So what is the bottom portion? How to find this bottom portion? So this is the Ka gamma H. This value is Ka. Ka gamma H. Okay. Ka gamma H. So this is the bottom bit of the pressure distribution diagram the overall height is h okay so now the passive earth pressure how to calculate passive earth pressure it is nothing but the area area of this triangle so calculate the area so half into b into h the triangle formula area of triangle formula so half into b is ka gamma h and h is nothing but h so half into ka gamma h into h how much h square okay so here ka or ca some books or notes they mentioned ca both are same ka or ca is nothing but coefficient of active earth pressure and coming to gamma gamma is nothing but density of the retained soil so every soil having some density what is in by density Density is nothing but mass per volume. Okay, kilonewton per meter cube. So coming to H is the height of the retaining wall. Okay, so therefore the lateral force due to earth pressure is the major force acting on the retaining wall. Okay, the magnitude of the force is expressed by the relation P A is equal to half into K A gamma H square. So now tell me where it is acting. That is the question. So it acts here. So PA acts here. So the height is it acts at the centroid. Always suppose uh, uh, this is the triangle means what is the centroid formula from base? It is nothing but one by three. From top it is that means from edge it is two by three. Okay. So here you can see this PA value is acting here. Okay. 1 by 3 of H. So it is called H by 3. Okay. So this lateral earth pressure, active lateral earth pressure is acting at the height of H by 3 distance from the base. Okay. And the value is uh, formula is half into Ka comma H square. Okay, this is the formula. Okay, students. Okay, now we will discuss what is the formula. So, coefficient of uh, Active earth pressure formula is 1 minus sin pi divided by 1 plus sin pi. Okay. So in case of passive earth pressure, it is inverse of Ka. Inverse of Ka is nothing but 1 plus sin pi divided by 1 minus sin pi. Okay, what is meant by pi? Pi is nothing but angle of repose or angle of internal friction. Angle of internal friction. Okay. 
so that is your pi value okay ka is nothing but coefficient of active earth pressure kp is nothing but coefficient of passive earth pressure okay so 1 minus sin pi divided by 1 plus sin pi for ka and 1 plus sin pi divided by 1 minus sin pi is for kp okay so always kp is greater than ka suppose for example in case of pi value is 30 degree that angle of internal friction of the soil value is 30 degree means that you can substitute this uh, pi value in this both of formula okay in this both of formula so we got uh, ka is equal to 1 by 3 ka is equal to 1 by 3 kp is equal to 3 okay if you have doubt means you can substitute in this formula 1 minus sin 30 divided by 1 plus sin 30 the value is 1 by 3 and 1 plus sin 30 divided by 1 minus sin 30 is nothing but 3. So always, not only 30 degree, always any type of soil, uh, Ka value is less and Kp value is more. Okay. So this is for horizontal backfill. Horizontal backfill. Horizontal backfill in the sense, suppose this is the retaining wall means like this. Okay. Suppose in case of sloped, sloped backfill, so suppose the backfill is some angle. Okay. So so this angle is theta. Okay. This angle is theta. That means a sloped sloped backfill. Okay. Sloped backfill. This is the sloped backfill. So under this condition, the Ka value, the Ka value is cos theta minus root of cos square theta minus cos square pi divided by cos theta plus root of cos square theta minus cos square pi. Here theta is nothing but the slope angle of the backfill. Slope angle of the backfill and pi value is the angle of internal friction. Okay. So multiply by cos theta. Okay. And the Kp value is same. Kp value Will not change only ka value will change so one plus sign pi to be one minus sign pi so the quotient of earth pressure ka depends upon the angle of shearing resistance and the inclination or slope of the backfill to the horizontal okay the quotient of earth pressure ka depends this uh, this is very very important note please note the quotient of earth pressure ka depends upon the angle of shearing resistance so pi value and the inclination or slope of the backfill theta value. Okay, so these two things we have to remember. Uh, here you can see the lateral pressure for horizontal backfill and lateral pressure for inclined backfill. Okay, lateral pressure for horizontal backfill and lateral pressure for inclined backfill. So in this case, you can see here, this is the pressure distribution diagram for uh, stem and pressure distribution diagram for base slab. Okay, here P1, P1 is the pressure distribution at the toe, uh, near the toe and P2 is the pressure distribution near the heel. And uh, uh, this is the triangle just now we seen. So this PA value acting at the height of H by 3. Okay. So you can see here the uh, earth fill is horizontal. You can see this is the horizontal, not an inclined one. Okay. Next, coming to lateral earth pressure for inclined backfill. You can see the inclined backfill, inclined big, uh, inclined backfill is subjected to an angle theta. Okay, subjected to an angle theta, and this is the pressure distribution diagram. Okay, pressure distribution diagram. So, in case of uh, inclined backfill, just now we seen Ka value will differ. Okay, so next coming to surcharge. Suppose any load will act. Here you can see yeah, uniformly distributed load. Suppose any um, vehicle is moving on the road. Suppose a road is constructed here. Okay, in this portion, road is constructed. Okay, so at the road, some vehicle is moving or train is moving means 
that is called surcharge load okay so for the surcharge load we have to include one more pressure distribution diagram it is like a rectangle you can see students it is like a rectangle this portion this is pressure distribution for surcharge load and one more triangle one more triangle this is for the backfill sulfate of the backfill okay students so this is the uh, major thing we must know there are three cases so in the examinations um, they will ask any three types okay so we have very small difference only in case of horizontal backfill you can calculate the uh, as usual you can do no problem but in case of lateral earth pressure for inclined backfill they given means we have to introduce the ka value formula okay ka value formula only differ okay coming to lateral earth pressure due to surcharge load means we have to draw the pressure distribution diagram like this that means we have to add one more uh, rectangle okay the value is ka into q value and uh, one more triangle okay one rectangle one triangle okay so this is the uh, major thing and in case of the load is acting for the rectangle it is exactly centroid that means at middle of the height in case of triangle it's acting centroid at h by 3 from the base okay so this is the lateral earth pressure for the surcharge load okay students so next coming to dimensioning of the member so next dimensioning of the member so we know that in case of cantilever type retaining wall there are three basic elements okay so first one is so stem heel slab and toe slab okay so base slab consists of both heel slab and toe slab so now let us see one by one coming to base slab first base slab base slab is nothing but the bottom of the bottom member of the cantilever retaining wall so the thickness of the base slab which is equal to h by 12 where h is the overall height of the cantilever retaining wall okay so thickness of the base slab is h by 12 but not less than 300 mm so it should not be less than 300 mm next width of the base slab width is nothing but the breadth breadth of the base slab is nothing but uh 0.5 h to 0.6 h okay 0.5 h to 0.6 h in case of any surcharge load is acting means the b value should be 0.7 h 0.7 h so um, next width of the toe slab it is nothing but b by 3 so where b is the base width that means base slab width okay you can see here i mentioned here so this is the width of the base slab b so width of the toe slab is nothing but this b divided by 3 okay next width of the heel slab is nothing but 2/3 of b this is 1/3 of b this is 1/3 of b and this is 2/3 of b okay so first in the problem first we what is the first step is we have to arrange the base slab so the thickness h by 12 Width of the base slab 0.5 h to 0.6 h. In case of such a, it is 0.7 h. Next, width of the toe slab it is b by 3, and width of the heel slab it is 2/3 of b. Next, coming to stem. Okay, so stem minimum value of stem stem thickness at top is 150 mm to 200 mm. Okay, so bottom thickness of the stem is equal to the thickness of the base slab. So students. Here there are two dimensions are there. So stem with stem thickness is not uniform. Why it is not uniform means since it is a cantilever member, the bending moment at the top at the free end is zero. But in case of bending moment at the bottom, it is huge. That means maximum bending moment occurs at the bottom only. So 
the width of the stem at the bottom is more compared to the uh, width of the that means thickness of the stem at the top okay that is the reason so we have to keep on widening from top to bottom we have to widen the stem thickness okay so the minimum value is 150 mm to 200 mm at the top but in case of bottom it should be more than 200 mm and the value is uh h by 12 okay same h by 12 you can see here h by 12 okay so here we clearly mentioned they clearly mentioned the bottom thickness of the stem is equal to the thickness of the base layer so the thickness of the base layer formula is h by 12 okay so keep it remember so now is coming to heel slab so heel slab heel slab it is designed for maximum bending moment due to earth pressure from bottom and the weight of the earth on the heel slab so for heel slab there is no uh, uh, thickness formula or uh, uh, reinforcement formula so it is based on the bending how much bending moment is developed okay so based on that we have to arrive this coming to toe slab so toe slab it is a very very small element so it is designed for maximum bending moment due to earth pressure from bottom and uh, weight of weight of the earth on the toe slab okay so actually one small correction is there actually in heel slab it is not bottom it is top because uh, earth is we place at the bottom of the heel slab okay please make correction so it is designed for maximum bending moment due to earth pressure from top okay because uh, in above heel slab only we are uh, uh, dumping the earth that means soil so it is in top and the weight of the earth on heel slab okay so next coming to uh, toe slab it is the bending moment due to the earth pressure from bottom and the weight of the earth on the toe slab so this are all the things preliminary dimension so we have to arrive the this is the first step in case of uh, cantilever retaining wall to arriving the preliminary dimensions okay ma'am i next coming to stability check okay so as we already know there are four important stability check okay first one is no tension at the base tension should not occur okay and also tension should be within the uh, b by 6 range so next bearing capacity sliding and over turn so let us see one by one in deep so no tension at the base so we already know that uh, brittle materials are vulnerable in case of tension forces occurs okay so for that it should be within the uh, uh, the eccentricity eccentricity of the force should be within the limit okay that means b by 6 value so the eccentricity e is equal to z minus b by 2 so this is the formula we have to calculate the eccentricity where z is equal to summation of m divided by summation of w m is nothing but moment m is nothing but moment and w is nothing but weight okay w is nothing but weight summation of weight so summation of m divided by summation of w minus b by 2 is the eccentricity formula okay so this eccentricity should be less than or equal to b by 6 what in by b b is nothing but base slab width just now we seen base slab width 0.52.6h okay so it should be less than the b by 6 band next coming to maximum pressure at the base maximum pressure is nothing but the safe bearing capacity bearing pressure so sigma max is equal to summation of w divided by b into 1 plus 6e divided by b see already some bearing capacity value they will give in the question okay suppose 200 kilonewton per meter square 300 kilonewton per meter square 
okay so for every foundation we have to design means we need safe bearing capacity value okay so uh, our calculated maximum pressure our calculated maximum pressure should be within the safe bearing capacity otherwise the soil the foundation will fail in shear okay so this is our uh, maximum pressure developed at the bottom this is the formula summation of w divided by b into 1 plus 6e divided by p so it should be less than the safe bearing capacity of the soil safe bearing capacity they definitely they will give in the question okay next coming to sliding how to check for sliding sliding formula mu into w divided by p so w is the weight okay p is the lateral pressure w is the weight and p is the lateral pressure it should be greater than 1.5 what is this 1.5 means it is the factor of safety 1.5 means factor of safety so therefore mu is equal to coefficient of friction okay this uh, mu value also they will give in the exam in the question paper okay so mu is equal to coefficient of friction it should be around a 0.5 or 0.6 like that so coefficient of friction between the uh, that the concrete surface to the soil so mu w divided by p is should be greater than 1.5 so suppose uh, the value is less than 1.5 means what we have to do means we have to provide uh, we have to design for shear key that is the additional step suppose the sliding it satisfies that means mu mu w divided by p is greater than 1.5 means shear key not required okay students Suppose it fail means we have to design one more element that is called shear. Next coming to overturning. Overturning formula M S divided by M naught. M S divided by uh, equal to stabilizing moment. Stabilizing moment. M naught is nothing but overturning moment. So the ratio of stabilizing moment and uh, overturning moment value should be greater than one point five. Okay, so stabilizing moment divided by overturning moment should be greater than one point five. So here also, uh, the one point five is nothing but the factor of safety. One point five is nothing but factor of safety. Okay, so now, so these are all the four important stability condition. So while uh, doing problem, we will see one by one.